not attempt any of the stunts you're about to see. Just when all hope seemed lost, message of a new message to an unknown old Breaking Widowmaker here, boys, coming to you live, all the way from the farm. We're dealing with this Astro Band got a coil problem. I think I have it figured out. I've been testing all morning and uh, I finally was able to make it die and I finally found something that was wrong, fixed it, now I can't make it die. Alright so here we are and I put this old coil on this morning. You could tell it's an old one because there's rivets holding it onto the bracket which means it's original, never been replaced. And the van ran for about an hour and a half. I couldn't make it die. Everything else so far today has checked out the way it should. And then I started moving these wires right here around. And I noticed, well, <laughs> it wasn't that hard to notice. The engine died and then it would not refire. And then I noticed that this connector right here for the ignition control module can't really see on camera how crappy it is but it's pretty bad it's all corroded inside and stuff so I went to the old black truck in the back field and I got a nice new one no corrosion no nothing so now I'm gonna open up this loom here trace these wires back as far as I can and replace both of these connectors because they are definitely uh, Something's not right. There's either a break in the wire, which I doubt because I checked all the wiring for breaks last summer. What I did not check was the condition of these. <laughs> all right, now you can see how crappy the inside of this connector is for the ignition control module. I shook this up and the engine died, would not refire. If I shook it up again, still would not refire. All right, so I now have the new connectors connected and I'm going to plug them in and fire it up. I don't think it's going to fire up though because I'm pretty sure when I moved that plug it killed the coil or the ICM. Or maybe it killed the ICM which killed the coil. I think that's what was happening before because both of them were going. But then I went to a 2004 GMC Sierra that I have, that ugly black truck, cut off the wires from it installed them onto here, plugged her in and she fired right up. She's been running for about an hour since then. And the coil is not super hot but it's definitely running temperature. It would get hotter if I had the doghouse on but that didn't matter yesterday because when it broke down yesterday I was driving at 100 kilometers an hour with the doghouse off. The wind was coming right through here, so the coil was just as hot then as it is now. Anyhow, if I shake up these wires now, nothing dies. I can shake up the whole thing. The last time I shook them up, the engine died. So I'm pretty sure I have it fixed now. I got out the multimeter this morning and tested the resistance of things and all that, and everything checked out just fine. So I let it sit here running for an hour and a half, it wouldn't die, that's why I shook up the wires to see if I could make it die, and that's exactly what happened. So I'm really really hoping that this is the answer to my problem. Alright guys, so this thing's been sitting here running for three hours, so it's definitely not the coil getting hot. Uh, I got 13 and a half volts still. Unfortunately. I cannot find out what this wire is supposed to have. It's the pink wire coming out of the coil plug-in right there in the center of the screen. If one of you has an Astro van and it's handy and running good, I would be really interested in knowing what your uh, wire is reading for voltage there because, I don't know, 13 and a half seems high and I made a video the other day and it was only 4.2. I watched the video again last night and I noticed when I shut the engine off that pink wire jumped up to 9 volts. I'll show you that clip again right now. Oh, well I got 4.2 volts right now. Yeah, so I have power at my coil. And uh yeah, now that you've seen what was going on there, 
I'm not sure what the hell is going on. Is it supposed to be 4.29 or 13.5? I have been Googling for hours and I cannot get the right measurement. Anyhow, I'm going to have to assume it's fixed because I can't make it die. I'm going to take it and do some laps around the field with you right now. See if I can make it die that way by shaking it up, but it's really hard to fix something that is not showing signs of being broken. Alright, so here we are. We're up in the top field, the go-kart race track. And I'm doing some circles around the track to try and get the coil a little bit more hot and to possibly shake up anything that will be causing it to lose connection. However, I have been down this road with this band before, uh, long before the engine blew during the pandemic it was doing this crap with the coil, and every time I would get an hour away from home, it would fail. I would drive circles like this at home, it would not fail. And finally I got so sick and tired of being towed home that I did 620 laps like this around the big track down in the lower field before I finally got the coil to intermittently die. And then after that happened, I put in a new coil and rebuilt the engine. And that coil lasted about 10,000 kilometers. And here I am back to having coil issues again. So I'm a little bit nervous to go out on the road because uh, yeah, I've been down this road before and I'm pretty sick and tired of having the bright green van towed home with everybody recognizing it. It's a little bit embarrassing. Anyhow, my back is killing me today. So I'm certainly not going to do 620 laps. Not today anyway, maybe tomorrow. Anyhow, I guess I'm going to go park it and call it fixed. I came out last night in the dark with a spray bottle and I misted water on that engine to see if it was arcing anywhere and it was not. I came out this morning and I had the multimeter to check the ohms and resistance and all that stuff. Could find absolutely nothing wrong. The cap was clean inside. Everything, absolutely everything just looked the way it should be except for that coil is now getting 13 and a half volts and I don't know if that's right or not and that connector was a problem. So anyhow, I guess uh, I'm really in no mood to be diagnosing things today guys. My back's killing me, that's why these videos are not like the usual videos I make. I'm stressed out and in pain. So I'm going to post this and let you guys do some thinking for me, which you did yesterday with the other video and I really appreciate it. Anyhow, these aren't my favorite type of videos to make. Uh, I don't like making videos where I have forced content and that's what I'm dealing with right now. Uh, so thank you for bearing with me. I really appreciate all the suggestions you guys put in the comment section of the last video. I did use them. I went through the van today, checked spark plugs and all that. Nothing was wrong, so there's nothing to show you really. But I will show you what I did find wrong. Anyhow, uh, I guess I'm going to leave these videos up and hopefully I don't have to come back and make a part 3 if it happens again because I only got one coil left. And I'm hoping that I can use that coil to get somewhere to buy more coils, just in case. Anyhow, that's another day, that's another video, so comment, rate, subscribe, share the damn video, don't do anything we wouldn't do, and stay tuned for the next one. Villains, I say to you now, knock off all that evil!